Hey, what's up guys and welcome to this video. This video is a full review of this thing right behind me. This Philips Pro Color Professional Image Editing Design, whatever you want to call it, monitor. Now we've talked a lot about gaming monitors throughout this whole channel and you can find a whole playlist full of pretty much most gaming monitors you can get, but we haven't really talked about professional monitors before. And when Philips and MMD got in touch and said, would you like to try out one of our photography image based monitors? I was like, well, I do a lot of photography. Yes, absolutely. And so after loaning me a unit, here we are today. And this particular monitor is 27 inches diagonal. It features an IPS panel that comes pre-factory calibrated to 99% of Adobe RGB color space. Now, you may have heard of the sRGB color space before, and the Adobe RGB color space is used normally by more professional grade photographers and things like that, because it's a wider color space, and so for a monitor to be color accurate, it's got to actually match all of this color space, which, it's, which this monitor should be doing right out of the box, out of the factory, at 99%. When you do actually get it out of the box, you'll notice that it's quite a big monitor. It is 27 inches, but the bezels are very big. This definitely isn't going to win the Design of the Year award. It's a little bit plain, a little bit boring, and if all honesty, I don't actually really like it all that much. Having said that though, it's the usual Philips stand affair, which is pretty user friendly. You're not gonna really struggle to sort of get this adjusted how you want. You've got height adjust, you've got tilt, you've got swivel. You've literally got pretty much everything you need. When we look at the buttons on the monitor though, I have to admit these are some of the worst buttons I've ever used. This is because there is no tactile feedback whatsoever, no noise, no nothing. So whenever you actually try and turn the monitor on, Literally, we're talking maybe 50% of the time it will work and 50% and then it, that it won't. And it is really annoying for me. Turning a monitor on shouldn't be difficult, but trust me, with this monitor, it really is. I think there is probably a knack to it and I am, and I am sort of starting to get used to it a little bit more. But it's ridiculous that if you want to turn something on, you have to actively try to do it. So please, Philips, can you please improve your buttons? Either get good tactile feedback touch base buttons or physical buttons and physical buttons are a lot harder to get wrong but it's not just the power button that has this issue unfortunately when you go into the menu system to try and calibrate this thing um, then you are going to run into the same problems and the buttons just aren't very responsive that said the menu is very well laid out and I didn't have much of a problem finding the settings I wanted to change because this is a professional grade monitor there are loads of different settings you can change, some of which I changed and some of which I didn't change. I always spend about half an hour sort of tinkering to get everything the way I want it to. But I mentioned earlier there's a preset uh, for Adobe RGB that's pre-calibrated, so I selected this, changed a few other things uh, and pretty much left most things where they were after I had changed this setting. But you can calibrate it to however you want. If you don't want to use the factory pre-calibrated setting, you have your own colorometer, or you have a really bright or dark room and you want to set it up accordingly, then you have the power to do that. So it's quite flexible in that respect. To get this thing plumbed into your computer, you're going to need to use either the DVI, DisplayPort, or two HDMI ports on the monitor. You've also got an audio in, as well as a headphone jack if you want to, say, use headphones. You can of course use the USB hub as well that's embedded in the monitor and something that we don't see all that often these days is also a webcam built into the top of the monitor. It's not going to win awards for the best webcam in the world but if you want just one single display or if you're like me and you very rarely use a webcam for personal reasons uh, then this is probably actually going to be quite a good thing for you. It's something that I would like to see more but is not really going to sell a monitor to people which is why generally speaking uh, they don't put them in anymore but it's quite nice to see. Once you do have this thing connected you're going to get onto the desktop and immediately you're going to be blown away by how good this thing looks. Granted you're a professional so you've probably seen this sort of thing before. The resolution of Quad HD is not the highest out there and in all honesty for a professional grade photography monitor we should be looking at a 4K screen but Philips do of course having the 5K version um, of their monitor coming out very soon so hopefully we'll be able to take a look at that and if you want something that will make your images even more resolved that is probably going to be the way to do it. 
but at the current price point of around about just over 500 pounds for a quad hd resolution your photos really do look very good and of course it's the color that really comes alive when you're looking at your photos on this monitor I am a semi-professional photographer. I do a lot of videography, as you can tell, um, but I use the camera a lot for sort of uh, events-based work, as well as uh, wildlife and photography, wildlife and photography, wildlife and animal photography. So looking back at my pictures, really look very cool. My favourite picture ever that I've taken um, of a swan just coming out of the water has never looked better. It really does look very good. Unfortunately, I can't get a big format printer, print off something in a super accurate way and then compare it against the screen um, simply because I don't have one. Uh, but the colour from my point of view is probably the best of any monitor I've ever tested. And that includes the LG UC97 which is definitely a top end monitor. So it's definitely something to consider. If you're not a photographer though, then you're going to benefit from the increased resolution of a Quad HD screen, especially if you've never used one before or if you're just used to something else. Uh, for general use, this thing is actually pretty damn good because everything will look that little much better due to the increased uh, colour space and colour accuracy. But actually the whole thing is very responsive as well, which is kind of weird because I've tested some things like the infamous uh, Philips 4K monitor that was one of the first 4K monitors I ever tested. It had an awful lot of input lag and the whole thing just wasn't very responsive and I was almost expecting something similar. But with the sort of overdrive setting on medium, this thing is surprisingly good in terms of responsiveness. So this made me think, maybe actually it's probably be alright for games. So I fired up Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and I was amazed that not only was this thing playable, it was actually pretty damn good. Um, granted, I am used to a 120Hz TN based monitor and I will always take that for a game like Call of Duty over anything running at 60Hz, but it was surprisingly good actually. I mean, there are a few problems with V-Sync, but that's probably just more down to the game than anything else. But the colours really helped, the whole thing looked absolutely amazing, but the whole thing was very responsive as well and I didn't feel like I was steering my character or anything like that um, towards the target. I was actually I was actually really impressed actually with how well this thing sort of holds it together and that's in a first person shooter so firing up Batman next and I had an absolutely brilliant experience in all honesty I've probably had the best experience out of the lot on this because I was playing at a nice solid capped 60 frames a second everything was responsive and the colours were absolutely gorgeous and that made me think that actually this thing probably is a lot better than I first had it down even for a general purpose monitor I would go out on a limb now and be a little bit stereotypical and say the professional that would buy this monitor probably isn't going to be playing Call of Duty on their monitor, that's not where they're buying it and they might not even have Call of Duty in their Steam library. But maybe if you're the sort of photographer that might want to boot up a cheeky bit of Civilization or something like that, um, a strategy game, then to be honest this is probably one of the best, plays, best ways to play them because you don't need the responsiveness and you don't need the high refresh rate so the main thing you're getting is really nice colour and that's the thing that you're going to notice so yeah for gaming actually surprisingly good and with that that actually brings us towards the end of this video and the conclusion a little bit shorter than usual mainly because we don't have some big new feature like FreeSync or G-Sync to talk about but the whole point of this monitor is that it's pretty much a no frills monitor it does one thing and it does one thing bloody well it's very colour accurate and if you are a professional or you're a prosumer that is all about photography and you don't care about have some, having some big shiny curved monitor on your screen or some big shiny iMac on your screen and you know that all you want is a monitor that's going to be super color critical and color accurate then actually this is a very very good option for you and if you don't need the 4 or 5k resolution of other top end monitors then you're probably going to save yourself a little bit of money as well. For any sort of general users as well, actually, it's not a bad option. It's not going to appeal as much as these big ultra-wide curved monitors that we're seeing that have this really sleek design. And the whole design is definitely something, uh, something that's a bit outdated and it does leave a little bit to be desired. But if you just want colours that are super accurate and a monitor that can pretty much handle everything else, 
then this is a solid choice, and that's why it wins the Top Performer Award. It's not the best all-rounder, it's not the best value proposition, but it's a bloody good monitor if you want something to be colour critical and colour accurate. So, that's the end of this video. I hope it's been useful, and thank you so much to Philips and MMD for actually getting this monitor out on a loan basis. Uh, to me for testing, it's been excellent, and I've got a few more pictures to go through, and I'm looking forward uh, I, well, I say I'm looking forward, it's a lot of pictures, but I'm looking forward to actually uh, seeing them back on this monitor because really it is actually uh, pretty impressive. So thank you so much for checking out this video as always. If monitors is your thing and you want to know about other monitors, so gaming monitors, curved monitors, anything like that, you can find the little eye somewhere around here, click on that and it will take you to the full playlist with all the monitor reviews I've ever done. And there are actually quite a lot, so maybe that's your best bet if you're monitor shopping. If you have liked this video, please like it, because it really does help. It lets other people know this is a video worth watching, and it lets me know that I've done a good job. Likewise, if it wasn't a video worth watching and I haven't done a very good job, then please give it a dislike, but do leave a comment to let me know what you didn't like about it, because that's going to help me improve for next time. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to PC Centric, and you get videos like this straight to your inbox every Sunday and every Wednesday. Join me for the live stream at 6.30 p.m. GMT every single Wednesday. So, thank you so much for checking out this video once again, and I'll see you in the next one.